again, not out of the woods, but you can see how close it is to reclaiming the 50-day moving average. And that's the theme, folks. That is the theme every night when you're looking to get value for the next day of trading. Concentrate on that 50-day, whatever you want. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey, everyone. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody had a good uh, day of trading. Some really, really good action. We'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about the individual pivots in a few minutes. But what, what I like what the market did today, and if you watch the the weekend update, you know, we talked about there's a level that I think the market is going to push. When I mean the market, uh, I want to use the QQQ as a proxy. And what was good about today's session was we didn't get that gap up into that 339 level. And you can see here what we talked about on uh, the weekend update. This is the area that I feel like the bulls are finally going to kind of like at least pause, right? Have a pregnant pause, maybe not turn around and go, you know, all the way back to the lows of um, March. But the point is kind of a little bit of a roadblock just to kind of get a little bit of a breather. What I liked about today's session was that, number one, the market rested. So we, we kind of bought another day of really good action. Um, bunch of names coming above different areas of supply. And it basically bought us another day that the queues didn't give that big exhaustion bar uh, break or exhaustion kind of parabolic quote unquote move into the next supply zone. So that's a good thing. And if you look at uh, all across the indexes, it really did represent that. The Qs were down nothing, 44 cents, beautiful res day. Uh, the IWM down nothing, right? Less than a dollar. If you look at the Dow, how much is the Dow down to? 50 points? Absolutely nothing. Again, really good, strong action. Uh, the spies, again, another uh, all-time high there. So it's good. Breathing is good. Congestion is good. Letting organic stocks pull up that reflect the action is all very, very good. And until we hit that really aggressive point into that 339 level on the queues, again, you, you, there's no reason to believe you shouldn't get aggressive in the names that are viably technical aggressive. And the names that are still moving over and over and over again are names that are reclaiming big 50-day moving average. So for example, NOW, and again, this is one of the names I pretty much, uh, again, if you watch the uh, the weekend update. Um, I'm going forward, and you know the reason is liquidity. Um, I'm going to stop really putting in a lot of beta names uh, in the in the nightly updates, just because it, the liquidity is very very tough. So a name like uh, NOW, and we'll you know we'll show the pivots in a second. Even though this had this massive seven dollar run. If it goes out to everybody, it's going to be impossible to get any type of liquidity. So uh, going forward, I'm just going to put a lot of non-beta names or at least non-beta names uh, kind of for some of you guys to watch for the next day. Uh, because, again, if artificial volume comes in, it's very, very hard for me um, to kind of decipher if it's organic or if it's artificial or a combination of both. So it's kind of a decision that I made a couple of days ago. And uh, going forward, uh, I'm going to kind of keep that. But the overall... Uh, the overall message is still the same. If you look at technology and what they did today, you, you're starting to see, again, the same theme over and over again. you got Amazon uh, continuing its move uh, after hours. Uh, Jeffries had a really aggressive note. Uh, I believe it was like a $5,700 um, price target, and stock is up uh, another uh, stock is up another 20 after the close. Uh, you have NVIDIA. You know, another name that we've been, you know, we've been watching, we've been trading over and over again uh, after the 50-day move. They had their analysts slash investors meeting today. A whole bunch of PRs came out, right? Uh, with Ad they did something with Amazon Web Services. They did, they did something with a new chip, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares, right? Nobody cares about the specific nature. It's all about price action. And NVIDIA just absolutely exploded. And now this thing is literally a day or two away from reclaiming 52-week highs. You have a stock like Square, very, very aggressive, had this monster move. You guys remember several, you know, last week, uh, there was an important area that, again, reclaimed the 50-day moving average off that uh, 237 level. And look where it is now. It 
It literally took out every single level. This is the highest close in this whole formation. They were coming for a near term, you know, 290 expiration today, call, call the expiration. So very, very bullish uh, in the tech space. Um, rest is good. Digestion is good. The last thing in what we talked about, especially um, in, in, in the weekend update was we don't want a market that's too far, right? Too, too hard, too fast. Uh, too much, too fast. We want slow. We want methodical. We want a nice distribution. We want completely one stock going to rotate it to the another stock and so forth and so on. And if you look at you know what we see value in today and what we saw value in today are names that are slowly starting to be put up. Like look at Tesla, for example, right? Really, really big aggressive call buying came out today. And this is the highest formation in this whole in this whole close. Now, again, is it out of the woods? Of course not. It still it needs to reclaim this 50 day moving average. But you could see slowly but surely my point how a lot of things are starting to be, get pulled up. You look at a name, for example, like UPWK, another member uh, of the NASDAQ 100. Again, not out of the woods, but you can see how close it is to reclaiming the 50 day moving average. And that's the theme, folks. That is the theme. Every night when you're looking to get value for the next day of trading, concentrate on that 50 day, whatever, if you're, uh, if you're uh, doing a manual uh, scan or you're doing some sort of uh, you know, program scan, concentrate on that 50 day break. The longer we stay above it, you're gonna have more and more charts complementing what we're seeing uh, in the NASDAQ 100. The names that are still weak is kind of the names we, we talked about in the weekend update, right? Look at GameStop. We talked about this uh, on the weekend update that it took out that 162 level. We'll get to the pivots in a second and traded right to the 50-day moving average. So if you believe that the 50-day moving average is important to the upside, which we've seen countless of really good pivots to the upside, well, doesn't that isn't the opposite so true for the downside as well, right? This is the first close uh, below the 50-day moving average. So if GameStop confirms tomorrow, man, you got another you got another $30 worth of downside room. So we're set up, guys. We're really set up. Even names like Baidu uh, that we talked about over the weekend lost its 10-day moving average uh, going lower as well. So we're, we are seeing a really good market. What I like about this market is not everything is going up once. Uh, we're literally getting rotation from a Netflix to a Tesla to a NVIDIA to a Facebook to a Microsoft and on and on and on. So it's not one of those scenarios that everything goes and some people can miss a whole day. Literally, you can miss a whole day and kind of miss your window. But what I like what they're doing is one is going here, the next day another one is going there, and slowly but surely, eventually, if the market continues to be good, eventually everything will get pulled up. They'll val validate and confirm the 50-day moving average, and then we can have a really, really uh, aggressive rally into the second quarter. Uh, earnings are going to start soon again, uh, but the more, again, the more time we spend uh, above the 50-day moving average on, especially on the NASDAQ 100, the higher probability you're going to have much, much, much more uh, validated and really, really exaggerated uh, moves on the line. And if you look at today's uh, today's session, again, you saw pretty good value, right? Not 10 stocks, not five stocks, but two, three names validating at one time, they're going. And going into tomorrow's session, we know the number, right? We know the number for a possible uh, exhaustion or quote unquote short term blow off top. So that 339 level is still valid, but the longer we can consolidate, the better we will have that organic move. So instead of maybe getting that one day move into the 339 level, maybe we'll get two, three days of slow grand, you know, really methodical grind. And there won't be any, you know, any uh, parabolic type of blow off top. Maybe it just gets three, four days of grinding, hits this 339, the next day validating 339, and we'll never see a back test, right? Wouldn't that be the perfect uh, bull case scenario? But again, we'll see. That's the most important part. Uh, you have to be prepared, uh, not only to your charts, but your, your areas of supply and demand uh, in your uh, ETFs uh, or any uh, areas of support and resistance that you're trading and be aware of those levels. So uh, let's talk about today's session. A uh, really good way uh, to start the week. Uh, again, not a lot of things, but the right ones. And that's the most important part. Uh, ozone, I still like for tomorrow. Very, very thin stock. Okay. Um, you know, so I'm, I'm going to share this with you guys. This actually looks pretty good. Um, 
I'm personally not going to trade this thing just because it's just way too thin. The whole day it traded 700,000 shares. But if this thing can reclaim that 62 level, right? You see this whole area here? If it can reclaim 62, keep an eye on it. It just trades a little too thin for me. Uh, NOW, huge move today. Congratulations for you guys who caught it. Uh, 531 needs to build. Again, here's a perfect example of a 50-day uh, of a 50-day consolidation, a 50-day uh, remount, and there it is, right? So the 531 was Friday's highs. It reclaimed the 531 level and put up a $10 candle. Big, big move. I still like it. I still think this thing goes higher, especially if the market continues to grind. Who knows? Maybe you could still get 30 points out of this thing. So really, really nice move there as well. The funny thing is, this was my first trade of the day was uh, TIGR. I, I, I liked it, right? I had it off the watch list uh, over the weekend. It was a very weird trade. It was a good trade. Don't get me wrong. It was a good trade. It was just very weird. And the reason why it was weird, so... Um, I bought it off that $20 area and the spike stuff, you know, spiked up about almost a dollar, which was great. There was nothing wrong with the trade. Uh, my last piece got stopped out break even because again, every runner just use break even as you stop. The odd, odd part about the setup was if you guys notice, especially for you guys who have uh, option scanners, there was repeat one after another, after another, like literally like, like for, for an hour straight. There was repeat weekly 2250 calls. And it's very, very odd that they, you know, they ran it up on the option sweep. That part I got, and that part was good. The weirdest part is they sold it off and sold it off very, very aggressively um, towards, you know, towards the latter part of the morning, which I really didn't understand. But in the midst of that sell-off, we still continue to see uh, 2250 weekly uh, weekly calls coming in, even when the stock is like down a dollar and dollar change. Either somebody like really, really knows something or somebody's really, really gambling. But anyway, uh, keep an eye on this thing for the next couple of days, just in case it kind of firms up. There could have been a seller. There could have been some sort of forced liquidation in this thing uh, in the morning. But it was a nice trade. It went from 20 almost to 21 on, on Tiger. That was, that was really nice. Uh, Tesla I caught several times today. We're not at macro yet at Tesla. I know a lot of people are excited and say, oh my God, Tesla's doing this, Tesla's that. Tesla's good, right? Tesla was good today. Um, we bought it on the opening range above 694 and then I bought it back above 697, traded to 705. It's not at macro yet. So for anybody who is watching Tesla going into tomorrow, it doesn't need to confirm macro. Matter of fact, if you look at Tesla's channel for tomorrow, we're still a ways. You can see where the 50-day moving average is. We're still a ways. So by no means do I expect Tesla to wake up tomorrow and challenge and reclaim the 50-day moving average. Would it be nice to not give back gains that it had today? Of course, absolutely. Would it be nice to see it kind of build on today's session, maybe kind of grind higher? Absolutely. Because the one thing we do know, once it does confirm the 50-day moving average, look how much upside you have. And there was a lot of really aggressive call buying uh, coming in on Tesla. You had uh, the weekly 720 with a lot of size. You had some monthlies coming in for the 800. So there are being bets being thrown on the line. But again, remember, the options market, you're betting on the future, right? There's no guarantee Tesla's ever going to do what you what you wanted or needed to do within the time frame of your bet. So that's why it's a big, a whole different discussion uh, between equity versus options traders. But the one thing we do know, if it does reclaim the 50-day moving average, whether it's this week, next week, or hell, maybe never. But the point is, if we do reclaim it, there's going to be a big, big move uh, potential on Tesla. So that was a nice move on Tesla as well. Uh, GameStop got absolutely annihilated. This is the second day in a row. Uh, this was Friday's pivots. Uh, 162 for bills below can flush. And Friday, it got down to 153. So this was the continuation pivot today. Uh, if it builds below 152, it can test 145. Not only did GameStop test 145, right? So here's the whole, uh, the initial 62 pivot here, the 153 confirmation, and it traded all the way down to 135. I'm telling you folks, if this thing, if this thing confirms today's price action for the next couple of days, guys, look how much room you have down here. So congratulations for you guys. Who are still holding this thing, holding a runner, because if this thing gets validated, man, there's a lot of room uh, to the downside still. Uh, Qualcomm never got up to the $41 area, got downgraded this morning and never saw the light of day. Uh, Zoom, not a big move, not a big move, but 319 held twice. If it builds below, uh, can flush. Didn't really flush. It went down, but didn't really flush. Here is Zoom. Uh, it took out the 319 level here. You can see it held there twice. 
and went down to 315. Not a big move, but 315, 313 now becomes line in the sand. And those two levels hit, especially if, there's a, if there is, quote unquote, a pullback in the market. Uh, you know, maybe this thing gets aggressive back to the downside. Uh, Tiger, you know, maybe, yeah, first 80, 90 cent move was big. Just the problem is it never followed through. Uh, GameStop take on the way down. Uh, Tesla take on the way up. And yeah, it's, it's, you know, it went to 705, 708 was the next supply. Uh, and here's the weirdest part. Again, we were talking about this Tiger nonstop, uh, weekly 2250s, you know, two, three dollars out of the money. And ironically, it just uh, kind of died on the vine there, which is very, very odd. Uh, GameStop went all the way down to 35. Again, we talked about NOW, uh, put up a $10 candle, actually went to uh, 541, almost 542. Uh, RBLX, nice move there from Friday, uh, 73. It confirmed 75, went all the way to 77. Hey, maybe, maybe this thing takes out all time highs uh, sooner than later. Uh, Netflix, again, didn't do anything at all today uh, as well. So, look, we have to be very, very patient. Uh, there's great, great rotation in this market. Uh, the money flow is obvious. But again, the most important part is know where the macro levels are. Don't anticipate. If you like Tesla, wait for the levels to confirm. The last thing you want to do is go early on Tesla. Go early on Netflix. Go early on Apple. The reason why technical analysis works, because these are very, very specific levels. I've gotten rejected before, and now they're getting confirmed. So guys, have a great night, everybody. we got a good game plan for tomorrow. And with God's help, maybe we'll get some great value. Guys, have a great night. I'll talk to you tomorrow.